What's up everybody, David here, and on today's episode of Firecast, we're gonna be covering the real-time database and the web. And just as a reminder to you, this is one of many episodes on Firebase and the web. So we have a whole series using Firebase authentication, Firebase hosting, the real-time database, you know, pretty much everything Firebase offers with the web, including JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Ember, and React. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we post those. But today, it's the real-time database, and we're specifically going to be covering real-time events, starting with the value event, which is great when you're trying to synchronize things like objects or primitives. So let's see how we work with that. So to the left right here, I have the data viewer in the Firebase console. And to the right, I just have a little web app, and this is my index.html page. And then I also have an app.js where I've configured my Firebase project. So in this app, I want to demonstrate how to synchronize events in real time. So to demonstrate a value event, I am going to create a pre-tag. So I'm going to create a pre and then give it an ID of object because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna display an object inside of this pre. So I'm gonna switch over to my app.js and I'm going to get this element from the DOM just using document.getElementById and just pass through the ID of object. And now that I have this DOM element, I want to create a database reference so I can synchronize data from the real-time database to my web app. And as you can see, there is no data yet. There is pretty much just this null object, but we're gonna be changing that in just a bit. So I'm gonna create this reference, and I'm gonna call it dbrefobject. And to get it, I'm going to write firebase.database.ref.childofobject. And essentially what this does is, is this ref function gets you to the root of the database. And then calling dot child just creates a child key of object. And then from here, we can store whatever value we need. Now I'm going to do the magical part, which is synchronize data in real time. And there's one all powerful method that you need to know, and that's the on method. So I'm going to synchronize the object changes with calling dbref.object.on. And you need to take note that right here, I'm calling on the database reference. And this database reference points at the location of object. So essentially right here, we will have data existing at this object location. And what we want to do is, is every time this data changes, you want to know about it in our web app. The first parameter the on method takes is the event type. And the event type is how you control the level of synchronization from the real-time database. So I'm going to use the value event. Now the second parameter is the callback function. And the event type right here controls when the callback function is called. In the case of the value event, the function will be called each and every time there is a change at this location in the database. So I'm going to create a callback function using ES2015 arrow functions, and then I'm going to log this value to the console. So this snap parameter is essentially called a data snapshot. And the data snapshot is not just your data. And that's why I'm actually calling .val. The data snapshot also returns lots of other important things, such as the key name and ways to iterate children and whatnot. But if you want to get the value, you have to make sure to call .val. So I pulled up my web app in the browser, and as you can see, this value is null, which makes sense because this is null right here. So let's go and change that. So I'm gonna add a key of the name object and then a value of high, and then boom, it changes. So I'm gonna go and change it again to hello, and you can see that updates. And let's go and actually delete. And now we synchronize back to the null object. So what you might notice is, is that every single time we changed anything here, it just started logging it out to the console. No, regardless of the change, whether it was something being added, so a new value, or something being 
change to another value, or even if we deleted the data, it all logged out to the console. And that's what the value event does. It's sort of a catch-all. And it works really, really well when you want to synchronize an object. So rather than synchronize just a string, let's go and synchronize an object. So here in the data viewer, I'm going to add a key name of object, but I'm going to add other fields. So I'm going to give it a name of miss object, say that hobbies are being an object, and the favorite number, of course, 42. And now when you look at the console, it's just a POJO, a plain old JavaScript object. It has the same values, fave number, hobbies, and name, just like what we put in over here. So now let's go and actually change some of this. So instead of 42, let's change it to 45. What do you think is going to be logged to the console? Do you think that it's going to be A, the number 45, or B, the entire object? TikTok, which one? Well, let's hit enter and find out. If you selected B, you are correct. It synchronizes the entire object, not just the value that was updated. And why is that? Well, the value event is a catch-all event in the sense that every time you update a value, you'll get that change. But you don't just get the little delta change of the value updated. You get the entire object back. And this is known as state synchronization. So now that we know how the value event works, let's go and display it in the pre-tag. So rather than logging to the console, I'm going to grab the pre-tag, tap into the inner text, and then just json.stringify, snap.value, and give it a spacing of three. And right here, we see our little JSON output. So we'll go and change some things around, change our number back to 42. That updates in real time, updates some hobbies, and all of that synchronizes to and fro in real time. So that's how you use value events, which you saw are great for when you're synchronizing objects and primitives. So now I have a question for you. What kind of objects are you synchronizing in your app? Are you synchronizing users? Are you synchronizing profiles? Which, I mean, I guess those are the same things. But, you know, what are you synchronizing in your apps? Just let me know in the comments below. And that's all for today. But stay tuned for next time where we're going to be covering child events, which provide you with a lot more granular control over the items in your list. So I'm just going to head out.